everybody, Liz LePage here. Today I'm going to be making a short clip video for you all about how to edit photos that were shot in harsh lighting. This image is a great example. I had to shoot a ceremony of a wedding around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and in a lot of cases on a sunny day, you end up with shadows like the ones that you see here. We've got a large shadow on our bride's face and neck, we've got a large one on her mother's face where her glasses are and down her neck, and we've got a couple of bright spots like on the father's head and the mother and the bride's foreheads. So these are all things that we want to go through and fix. I can't go back and reshoot this. I had to shoot in the moment I was given. So let me show you a couple of the tips and tricks that I use for editing images like this one. We're going to start out here in effects and on the right hand side, we're going to add a filter and start off with the HDR look. This is one of my favorites for adjusting the highlights and the shadows in the image. And what we want to do is darken our highlights and lighten our shadows. And the compression slider at the top of the HDR look filter is great because it compresses all of those lighter and darker elements and moves them closer in towards midtones. So right now the compression slider is set to 100. And let me show you the difference really quick between zero and 100. This is the image we started out with. And this is what we get when we add that compression slider. All of a sudden, the bride's face is starting to come back here. The shadow on her face is starting to lighten, especially her hair right here. We want to be able to see some of those colors. You'll also notice that the father's face looks a little bit more even, as does the mother's face. So the compression slider does a really, really great job. Now, if it doesn't do what you're looking for, or if you need to individually adjust your highlights and your shadows, you do still have those sliders. So we can take the highlight slider, and we can move that down to darken the highlights even more. And we can lighten those shadows up a little bit more as well. This is going to be really dependent on the image that you're working with. So pay attention to the subjects that you're editing. Now, there are a couple other sliders where you're able to do things like add detail, clarity, vibrance. What I like to do is zero out pretty much everything else. I want to focus on the exposure here and leave a lot of the other details alone. So I'm going to drop that vibrance back down towards zero. And then the detail slider, I don't really need to add a lot of detail here because we don't want to highlight all of the edges of the shadows in our image. So adding too much detail can do that and it can make it look a little funky, especially when you're working with people. So I'm going to drop that detail slider down. Now the secret to making this HDR look work really well is by adding a mask. What we're going to do is we're going to mask out the background. We don't need that to have lighter shadows and darker highlights. We don't really care about the background as much. We want it to fade out and we want to bring our subjects to the foreground. So we're going to click to add a mask to our HDR look. I'm going to go down and click the invert button. We're going to hide this filter from everywhere in our image. And then we're going to go up to the tool options bar here. You'll notice that the opacity is set to 100, but I want to add a 100% feathering amount. We want the edge of the brush that we use to be very, very soft here. We don't really want to see the harsh edge of where we're adding this filter. So let's go ahead and make our brush a little bit larger. And then I am just going to click and paint over my subjects. All right, so I've gone through and I've created a mask, which you can see on the right hand side here in my filter stack. What we're going to do is actually reuse this mask in a moment because we're going to be adding some more filters. So I'm going to click the copy button here, go up to the add filter. And the next thing that we're going to do is darken the background a little bit more. What we want to do is have our subjects more in the foreground and pay less attention to what's going on in the background. And I'm actually going to be using a vignette for that. And one of the reasons why I like to use a vignette is because it creates a softer edge. Instead of just pasting that mask that we just created and inverting it and darkening the background, which could create harsher edges, the vignette creates a softer edge and gives more of an illusion that the vignette is actually happening on the whole image and not just on the background. So it's a good little way to darken the background a little bit around the edges, but still using a mask to make sure that your subjects are in the clear. So we're going to darken it quite a bit. We're going to drop the size down quite a bit. And then we're going to go up to our mask button, click 
paste mask, and then click invert. Now our subjects are in the foreground, they're nice and bright, and the vignette in the back is darkening the background without making it look too harsh. The next thing that we need to do is we're gonna add another filter and we need to actually add a little bit of contrast back to the image. It feels a little bit counterintuitive, but the thing is, is when you flatten an image too much with the HDR look, you end up with a really awkward looking photo. So a good way to add just a touch of contrast is using the sunshine filter. You can add a little bit of warmth here. It adds a little bit of vibrance to your image and you can control the amount quite a bit. So we're just gonna take that amount slider, drop it down just a bit, if I want to, I can warm the image up a smidge if it needs it or add a little bit of saturation, but just that little bit of contrast makes the image pop a little bit more. Now, if you're still dealing with problem areas, which I know a lot of you guys probably have images that are even more difficult than this one, a great way to do that is to manually dodge and burn using your adjustment brush. Just click on the adjustment brush in your filter stack and select lighten or darken from the top in your presets right up here. And once I select whichever one I'm going to choose, I can individually lighten and darken the areas that need it. So we're gonna choose lighten here. Now before we go in and just start painting all willy nilly, go up to the opacity slider and drop that down to about 20. We want to add the brightness slowly. We don't wanna go overboard. So that's really, really important. And then all we're going to do is just click and drag over the areas that might need a little bit more brightening here. The dad's face is a great example. The cheek and the neck of our bride, we want to brighten those up and make them a little bit more even with the rest of our image. And a little bit more of the mother's face here. We just want that to be a little bit brighter so we can see it a bit better. Now if you want to, you can go around other areas. And then if you need to, you can also go back in and add a little bit of burning or darkening to areas. Sometimes when you over lighten, you lose contrast on areas like eyebrows and eyelashes, on lipstick and hair. And so being able to go back in with our adjustment brush and selecting the darken option gives us the ability to darken and add more contrast to the face. So we can darken up the hair just a smidge so it's not quite as bright here. Um, we can make our brush a little bit smaller and go over things like eyebrows, which is a really good area that needs a little bit of darkening, and things like lip color to kind of even that out. Now, once we're done here in effects, and let's say there are still a whole bunch of areas that need a little bit of help. These harsh lines on the bride's face are really bumming me out. So the last little trick I want to show you guys is by jumping over into layers. Now, it seems like a strange place to go for this, but one of my favorite tools ever for retouching and quick retouching is the retouch brush. You can access it inside portrait as well, but I don't want to deal with retouching their entire faces. I really just want to use that retouch brush and you can find it here. So we're going to go ahead and select it. I'm going to zoom into my image quite a bit so we can get a better close up of the bride's face. And I'm going to go up to my tool options bar. And before I use this brush, I'm going to lower my opacity down to about 20. Somewhere between 15 and 25 is going to be your sweet spot here. And we're going to make our brush about right about there. We don't want it too huge. And I'm just going to click and drag over some of these harsher lines. Now the reason why we're doing this is because the retouch brush a low opacity adds a little bit of softness around these edges here and you can really see it with this harder line right here down on the edge of her neck. You don't want to go overboard because it is also softening skin as it does it but it's great for getting rid of some of these really bright hot spots and these harder to reach shadows like her eyelashes and around her eyes. Because she was staring right into the sun, we've got those squint lines right on the edge of her face. And just by softening those, it's not quite as harsh as what we started with. So we're just going to go over most of her face here, particularly around those harsher edges, and really make sure that we soften out some of those bits. We can use this on the dad's face as well. Right up here where that bright spot was, it was really hot this day, so he was sweating a little bit, and that bright spot is kind of distracting. So by going over it a couple of times with this low opacity retouch brush, it's not quite as harsh as what we started with. 
This is also really good for softening things like these glass shadows. So she had on her glasses because it was so bright and we just want to smudge it a little bit so it's not quite so harsh. And we can use this brush all over to soften wrinkles and fine lines, any of these bright spots here. So let's go ahead and zoom out here and take a look at our before and after. This is our after image. We did a whole bunch of work inside of layers and effects. This was our original photo. It's really, really dark. It's got a lot of really harsh shadows. It's hard to see where we're supposed to be paying attention, foreground or background, whatever's going on. And this is our after image. We could still go in and do a little bit more work, but I wanted to do a really quick edit for you guys to see how quickly you can take some of these harder images and make them a little bit softer.